I mentioned that polynomials was one of our weak points. Okay, so we've got some stuff to review over the next uh, few weeks. Let's have a look at this question. Show that, given this P of Z polynomial, show that I, W, and um, 1 on W are also roots, okay? So most people got, right? I'm supposed to use the factor theorem here. Um, so most people said, okay, I'll substitute in I, W. I'll give that a go. And when you can see your I to the 8, your I to the 4, we know that those simplify out, so that was fine. But when we got to this um, substituting in, the reciprocal of W, right? The most common error was that students saw this thing and they said, oh, gross, fractions. I don't want fractions. The only thing I know has to do with this, right? So I better get rid of my fractions and subsequently students multiplied through. Now you can't do that. You can't do that because you don't know what this thing is equal to. It's a function you should have factorized down, which is exactly what I've done over here, okay? Um, so please be careful with how you're working with these polynomials. If you had something equal zero, if you knew it was equal to zero, then you could multiply through. But the whole point was to prove that it equals zero, which is what makes it a root. Um, I don't know if this is the same thing as what you're saying, yep. but in the first part, if we have proved that um, P of W is a root, mm -hmm. then you're, you're, you're given that P of W is zero. Yeah, yep. and if you um, prove that P of 1 on W is also a root, yep. then um, can you use P 1 on W equals zero as a result for proving the last? I don't know. To prove what? To prove which part? I don't know. Actually, I'm a bit confused about why the sentence like a certain thing that I've done is incorrect. Oh, okay. Alright, I'm happy to look at it in a okay. second. And yeah. I don't know if it's that or something else. Okay. Oh, I'll look at it in a bit more detail. Okay, uh, now part two. Um, the people who survived part one were okay with this, but a lot of people came out of the exam hall and said, boy, long exam. Long exam. It's because you didn't spend six lines on this, you spent 16 lines on this by converting for some inscrutable reason into mod arg form. Now, okay, swallow your pride for a second. Can anyone tell me why? I'm honestly interested in why um, you would convert into mod arg form here because I'm just mystified. I was looking at it again. I was like, why did people do this? For someone who did, can they tell me why they went that way? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So then mod arg form would have helped, but then I didn't see that it was actually okay. simple. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, all right. sometimes when you're trying to like remember what part of the service is Yeah. I'll part. try this one. Like, okay, give it a go. Oh, no, okay. Gotcha. All right, all right, I'm with you. Okay. So I guess um, now now we recognize this. Uh, mod arg form, mod arg form, the place you should go in mod arg form, uh, complex conjugate root theorem is one of them, but you don't even have to use... Um, mod arg form for complex conjugate root theorem. Um, the place I, I pretty much only go there if I have to deal with angles or if I have to deal with De Marvis theorem. And I didn't have to do either of them in this case. So I guess for you next time, that's a bit of a cue. Don't go there. Even just writing things in mod arg form takes forever, okay? So not only did you have more lines, the lines were very time consuming. This is the way that was simplest, okay? No, you shouldn't. That's okay. I will point out the other issue was that um, people forgot this was an octic equation. So it had eight solutions, right? So you can see when you go from z to the 4 to z squared, you get a pair of solutions, right? And then when you go from z squared to z, you get a pair of solutions for each of the things in your pair, right? And, and the same thing happens over here. So there are eight solutions in total, and um, quite a few students forgot that. Yep, so if you got here. So that's, that's, what I, that's where I got, but I didn't get it. Okay, I'll have a look at it. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Write something for me. In the second line, there should be a plus 2 Uh, This one? No, not that one. Which one? Where am I looking? Plus 1, you have to plus 2. Second line. Second line. Oh, hold on. Do you mean... Whoopsie daisy, I'm just... Sorry. Do you mean this one here? Yeah. Uh, that's supposed to be a two. There we go. Fixed. Okay. Yeah. Happy. Awesome. Right. Let's move on. 
Okay, inequality of creation. Now, I don't, I don't uh, feel bad if you struggled with this one, okay? But here's a lesson for you, right? And hopefully some of you did this anyway. Again, when it comes to time, time is precious. If you know inequality is a weak point for you, then come back. Don't sink your time into this, okay? Do it if you can do it efficiently. That's just a general exam technique. For a three-hour exam, you cannot afford to spend 10 to 12 minutes on a question worth, what was it worth? Two, yeah, one and then two. That was it, okay? If you see it, yeah, yeah, sorry, one and one equals two. So if you see it, go for it. And you can see it falls out fairly quickly, but if you don't see it, move on, right? You're gonna have to fight tooth and nail to get those two marks back later on. So this is the way I went about it, right? Um, you can see, I think the, the best way to go is to start from a known result and then shift around and add equations, or I should say inequalities, together to get X and Y and Z all together, right? So you can see if you've got um, things about X, Y, and Z, like up the top, X minus Y all squared is greater than zero. That seems like an obvious place to go because what, question, what part of the question sort of clued you into that? There are two things. No, number one, number one, there are squares, okay? So square something, please. I think most people recognize that. But number two, to get to this x squared plus y squared 2xy thing, then you want, you want this negative here. You see that? So that when it migrates over to the other side, you get x squared plus y squared is greater than 2xy, okay? Uh, and then you can progress from there. Yep, you'll get these. You'll get this so you can scrutinize it. Um, I guess, like I said, so this was the feedback given, right? So if you're not sure, shelve it and come back, okay? There are easy marks to be had elsewhere, or quicker marks at least. Okay, let's have a look at this ellipse. So you got thrown a mark. Part one, you should have gotten on autopilot, okay? Finding the equation of the tangent in classic form. Not caught a contact, not something really challenging like that. This should have been easy to get. Okay, so two marks there. Right, now the hard part started, okay? Now some people said, I didn't know the area of an ellipse. Keep in mind, keep in mind, you get given this result about the ratio. Okay, you get given this 2 to the, um, 2 um, in ratio to pi tan theta. Okay, so the... the Area of an ellipse is implied if you can get the area of the triangle, right? Now, I know that's slightly shady, but it, it works. It's fine. And also, when you think about the area of a circle, pi r squared, it is just the special version where a and b are both the same, and they're both the radius, okay? So people really struggled to progress through this. I just want you to um, look at this with me for a moment. When you have a look, I know I have fancy colors that help you see the diagram, okay? But even I, once I had this, I had to put together something like this for myself because I'm like, I, I can't see what's going on. Even on a beautiful diagram like that, and you've just drawn it for the first time. I had to draw for myself this guy over here. Subsidiary diagrams, bonus diagrams that take out, they pull out uh, the relevant part. Um, in the circle geometry question, also very valuable. They help you get, okay, these are the coordinates. So these are the lengths, the, um, the base, the perpendicular height, and that's where you get your area out of. Once you see this, do you see what I mean by the area of the ellipse is implied in here, right? It's like, or the pi AB is what gets this factor out, okay? So if you were careful with this part, that's what got you the area. That was the hardest part, I think, seeing the triangle and working out what's a smart way to work out its area, okay? Um, you've got no angles in there. Uh, if you go towards uh, half a, B, sine C, you're just in, like, you, you need angles for that. So you really had to go with base and perpendicular height. You just had to choose one appropriately. How did I know to choose OS as the perpendicular height? Sorry, the base. How did I know that would give me clearly the quickest way? Uh, yeah, it's, it's vertical. Look at the other two. They're like off at these weirdo random angles. I don't want to find that distance. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be terrible. So choose that carefully. And then it's like, oh, well, therefore, the perpendicular height must be an x coordinate. And that's how it fell out. Okay. Um, and then you simply had to progress from there. And it was a, it was a simple ratio to evaluate. Okay. Right. Uh, one last question. There's an absolute value in that tan theta, right? Why is that there? Right, because this diagram is just one version of this. P can go anywhere it likes, right? So some people ignored, like they tried to progress through and ignored the absolute value, but P could be like over here. 
could hang out there, right? In which case my x coordinates or my y coordinates, if I'm down here, they can be negative. So that's what the absolute value fixes for me. I just want the magnitudes of those lengths. That was a challenging question, the geometry of it.